Hello guys, you're welcome to another edition of your favorite show, um, sports show on Facebook. It's the Game Plan Show. My name is Fifi Anam, and as always, we are streaming live on Facebook. We are on Pulse Ghana Sports. You can check it out, and I'll be reading some of your comments. In fact, all of your comments, as I always do, and let's make the show interactive. Um, ask questions, you know, drop comments about, you know, what, what, what you, um, you're watching and about the story that we'll be discussing on the show today as well. We are also on Twitter at Paul Sports GH, also on Instagram and on Snapchat as well. We are everywhere in Paul's Ghana Sport. Now let's just delve straight into what we'll be discussing today. I'll be telling you about Asamoajan. You know, today's episode is a bit of a review one, um, and we apologize for not bringing you the show yesterday due to some technical issues that we had. So what will be happening today on the show is that we'll be reviewing the boxing um, bout that happened at the Bukum Boxing Arena on Friday. I believe it was uh, Mayweather was supposed to be there. He didn't come. <laughs> but that's a, another topic for another day. It was between Obudai Sai and Walter um, Kotondokwa, I believe it was. Yeah, he beat Obudai Sai at the Bo uh, Bukum Boxing Arena on Friday. And then we'll also be telling you about Asamwajan's new deal um, that he has um, um, recently had in Turkey. Um, it is at Bezaspor. We'll be telling you about the details to that. Asamajan, of course, is in the country after helping the Black Stars to a 5-0 win against Ethiopia um, a few days ago. He scored his 50th goal for the Black Stars. He made his debut you know, many years ago, and you know he's been celebrating and um, undertaking a lot of interviews. As well. So we'll also be telling you about the MTN FA Cup where Kotoko and Haas were involved in victories. We'll be giving you a review of that. It's now into the quarterfinals. Can you imagine? Um, it started just a few weeks ago, and now it's drawing um, steadily to a close. I'll also be telling you about the Black Stars, who will be leaving on Friday for friendlies against uh, Mexico and, and against um, the U.S. of A. So um, in um, East Hartford, Connecticut, and as well as um, Houston, Texas. So two games um, coming up. Um, and some players will be missing. I'll be telling you about that as well. I'll also be telling you about Baba Rahman. Remember him, our left back? Um, he got injured at AFCON 2017 in Gabon. Um, Gabon, sorry. Um, he will be back. In fact, he's back. Um, on Friday, he trained with Schalke. I'll be giving you, you know, what, what is happening in this camp as well. So, yes, we are on Facebook. Remember to send in your comments, polls, Ghana Sport. I'll be reading them. Um, as the show goes on, I'll just log on in a bit and, you know, just um, interact with you guys as I always do. And we'll start off today's show with Asamwajan. <laughs> he has landed a new deal in Turkey um, with Bezaspor. Remember, Asamwajan um, is currently um, in the UAE um, in terms of where he plays his football. He plays at Al Ain in the UAE league. He's no stranger to that league. He joined... Um, sorry, Al Ali. <laughs> Asamwajan currently playing at Al Ali, which um, is the rival of Al Ain, where he used to play a few years ago. He moved from Sunderland to the UAE to Al Ain in 2011. Spent four seasons there. Just a single season that he managed to score under 20 goals. So he was absolutely on fire there. He scored 29, you know, 28 um, at a certain point. His last season was his uh, least performing season. He scored about 13 goals. And then he moved to China. Big money move. Um, to Shanghai SIPG. Things didn't work out well for him. He made about six appearances in, in his first year, um, about six again in his second year, and he had to move back to the UAE where he got the money and as well as um, a bit of his form. Not a lot of it, but Samajan has been struggling a bit. But now he has landed a deal <laughs> with Berzas Poor. I'll be telling you about that. Samajan scored six goals in 14 games for our uh, Ali. In UAE this season. Not a very, very good return for him. He himself has admitted that he's um, undergone a lot of, you know, frustrations with injuries, you know, muscle problems, you know, hamstring, blah, blah. Asamajan hasn't been having the best of times in the last um, few months. Of course, he's a captain of the Black Stars. And he, um, <laughs> let me just, let me just uh, take you through the details of his contract. I have it here, the, the document cited by Paul's Ghana Sport. We'll be reading it to you in a bit. Now, it says that Beza Sport have made as a merger, um, an offer of three years. So, three years. That's for starters. And they'll be paying him 1.6 million euros. 
every season. Now this, if you know Asamoajan's history with money since 2011, there's not a lot of money. Asamoajan at our iron was earning in excess of about $200,000 a week. A week. And that's after every um, bit of tax deduction is made. So Asamoajan, you know, for him to be in a situation where he's had to uh, take a pay cut to earn about 30,000 euros a week. You know, it shows you where, um, it's a sign of the times, in, in my opinion, uh, anyway. Um, n n from $200,000 a week now to about 30,000 euros a week. Huh. Asamoajan, uh, not a lot going on for him. But he's, he himself has admitted that he's growing. You know, things are changing and, you know, he, he has to start thinking about the end. Although, surprisingly, after Ghana played Ethiopia and he scored his 50th goal, in his post-match interview with GTV, he stated clearly that he has many more years and many more goals. So, I mean, he's been contradicting himself a lot over the last few weeks, Asamoajan. He's saying he will play for a lot, a lot more years and he's saying he's getting um, better with age and at the same time admitting that as, as he grows older, his injuries uh, um, keep worrying him as well. So that's Asamoajan for you. Three-year contract with Bezospor, 1.6 million euros per season, 30,000 euros a week. Somewhere down there. So I'll read you the full um, letter from Bezospor, which has been cited by Paul's Ghana Sport. It says, as we indicated earlier, uh, uh, as we indicated in our interest letter dated 9th June 2017, we would like to make an initial offer for the transfer of the player as Samwajan, baby jet. <laughs> Um, that's just his nickname, as follows. Now, three-year contract, 1.6 million euros per season. Now, in order to negotiate the terms and conditions, we would like to invite you to Istanbul on Wednesday, the 14th of June. That's passed now, and we are ready to provide you the flight tickets if you send us your passport copy. So, this a bit of how um, transfers work, um, um, you know, um, the club making a move um, uh, on Asamoajan's agents, and they have to respond. Of course, Asamoajan himself couldn't fly to Istanbul for the negotiations, but you know his representatives um, were there as well. So that's it for Ghana captain Asamoajan, who will be moving to Turkey in a deal that will see him earn about thirty thousand um, euros every week, which is a huge, you know, pay cut from what he currently enjoys at our Ain. So, baby Jet, all the best to you um, after scoring your 50th goal for Ghana. A lot happening. Um, but, you know, let, 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 let's just pause on Asamoajan a bit, right? This past weekend, Asamoajan was on perhaps the biggest interview show <laughs> in Ghana at the moment. Um, most people have heralded it as well. Um, on the delay show. Now, um, Asamoajan spoke a lot on what has been happening in his career over the last year because he's been on the show before and he talked about other issues. Now, he talked about his money, you know, how he's aging, his injuries, as well as the controversial issue of the captain's armband. All of you remember that, right? Against Ethiopia, he came off um, at a point and didn't take off his armband and we later got to learn that it was customized. <laughs> Some Adam put his face on his armband and... You know, it caused a whole lot of controversy. And he, he spoke about it as well. And we have the video for you, courtesy The Delay Show. My producer will be playing it right about now. Ube can say, sir, achievements. A year 50 ago, Oshe, you know. The whole amban saga na a bayan. A bit take the light off of sir, achievements, you know. Oh, I don't think so. Because um, the funny say, uh, uh, but I don't think say a problem be a say uh it to me emphasizing on that way. In a game that we've won convincingly, mm -hmm. I say uh, personally in so much fifty go uh, mm -hmm. time I was say if I celebrate I think say um somebody had a personal issue with me. So that is what I think. And then back on I side no issue. Because before the game, no. Many my assistant there and Andre, it's mm -hmm. now Kasai. Mm -hmm. And I'm catching and say, oh, eh, me amban no me use. Me children before the game. Mm -hmm. Say me amban no me use. Customize. Eh, be now I'm feeling comfortable. Say be a me picture. Ebosu. Eh, Ebosu. Eh, Intino mm -hmm. only use original one for the team no. On fan share no. Say ne be a in case say substitution but I me call out ah. Now on share on share oh. Intino we be share game na me pay no ah no no so call. 
Ben Chokoji Amber no ring. A boy, in the something planned. Here, oh, Nim Dada, I said, Bibia, but Abia media no sooner I have been blaming Kakra because of sir, a rivalry no more created before. Say, who, Abia, many and real problem, many and real problem. They be our camp, I have three, Bibia, Bibia, or problem be or do me between the missus are camp or police station cry about it, but too a we public man go for your bachelor hotel or a book, please, and you know. Sad problems now the media have created say many and real problem now. I don't think it's, it's the right thing to do. I'm okay, so that was Asamwajan speaking about you know the purport, uh, the purported beef between himself and Andrea Yu and the whole saga of the armband which was customized and during Ghana's game against Ethiopia. And I have my own opinions on them um, on this issue, and I'll be sharing them with you right about now. I feel you see a lot has been said about Asamwajan. And Andrea you and I also feel that the, the the whole saga of the armband was totally unnecessary not in terms of us talking about it but in terms of the action being made on it on, in, in itself now after the game the GFA vice president mr. George free came out um, and you know he, he, he spoke on a, a couple of stations um, you know he was interviewed on the issue and he made it clear that this incident happened on the blind side of the management now, he, met, he even made an allusion to what happened at the 2006 World Cup um, when um, John Pencil uh, drew out an Israeli flag. You remember that celebration very well? I think it was after a game against the Czech Republic or after we qualified out of our group. Now, he was just you know, running around the pitch with an Israeli flag and it caused a lot of controversy. It got us into a bit of trouble. And he, he mentioned it, Mr. George Fury that some of these little things escape the management. You know, you go for pre-match meetings and, you know, you, are, you show your armband. He said that Ghana is supposed to have a yellow armband and a green armband, and they present it during the pre-match formalities. And, you know, they tell them about the players who are on yellow cards, you know, lineups, and, you know, the discrepancies and all, all, all these things are ironed out before the game. So they don't understand how this escaped them. So that is, that is it aside. That just shows that it wasn't something that management was aware of. Well, Kwesi Apia, of course, came out after the game to explain that, you know, they knew about it and, you know, that is why the whole transfer of the armband didn't happen. So, on that level alone, you could see that Samajan had done something that they had to cover up for and, you know, it, it, it looked like a mess from the outside. And so, that is why it was very, very unnecessary. I mean, you scored your 50th goal, Baby Jet, you are a legend. I mean, you don't need to to put yourself out there in such a manner, especially against the backdrop of, of what happened with, um, um, with regards to the rumors between um, of the rift between yourself and, uh, and, and, and Andrea. You, I mean, if there's such tension in camp and then you do something that will blatantly blow it, you know, wide open. I mean, it's something that, um, for me, you know, if you don't do it, nothing will happen. So sometimes, as a leader, you need to use your discretion. You know, if I do this, you know, public opinion, public perception, you know, what, what is it going to do to our team, especially now that we are, we are starting a new era? You know, and I, I, I feel it was, it was very, very hard on Coach Kwesiapia as well, um, who obviously defended his captain, as he should do in public. Um, so thumbs up to Kwesiapia. A lot of has been said about how, you know, he, he looked clueless, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, this is what a coach should do. You defend your players in public and then in, in private, you discipline them. So hopefully they have iron things out. So that's just my take on the whole Asamajan issue. It shouldn't happen again. You know, you don't need to do that. Let's not even talk about the whole controversy of FIFA going to sanction Ghana because we are not supposed to customize Amber. Let's just put that aside. And let's talk about, you know, the, the whole, you know, and a lot has been said about emotional intelligence uh, factor. You know, Asamajan should have known better, in my opinion. Um, it doesn't take anything away from his legend, though. He's on 50 goals for Ghana, over 100 caps. And he's one of the greatest players we have ever produced. But going forward, Asamajan, please be a bit careful with the sort of decisions that you take. So that's it for the whole arm bandage. Now, Asamajan also spoke a lot about, you know, issues in his life. He talked about how before games he consults a spiritual father because he believes that football is a spiritual affair or a spiritual work. That's what, how he put it in his own words. And that, you know, he doesn't believe that you should just go take to the field and just play. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of people in Ghana believe this. And, you know, we are very superstitious with our football as well. So that's a Samuaja. He also spoke about how, you know, he doesn't believe he's spending a lot of money. 
Um, just today, um, this morning, it came out in a report by Final Sports. Um, kudos to Final Sports for this report. They reported that um, Asamajan has spent over 2 million Ghana cities on charity. And, you know, so that, that's good for him that he's, you know, he, he's reinvesting all the money he's making. Of course, he bought a $3 million house at a certain point. He's, you know, he's built a, an astro turf for his alma mater, um, Accra Academy. You know, he's doing a lot of work. So he's spending his money well in his opinion. And so that's it about his money. Um, he was asked whether he was blowing money, and he said, you know what, he's, he's using his money as well as his, he can. And of course, he's not earning, he, or he will not be earning as much as he did um, a few years ago at our iron. Now, like I reported earlier, Asamajan is on a deal that will see him earn you know, 30,000 euros, not even in, <laughs> in dollars anymore. He's now earning in euros, and it's way, way lower than he's used to. Of course, he's not been scoring a lot of goals um, of late, his last season with our Ayn, sorry, our Ali, he scored six goals in 14 appearances. That is very unlike Asamoah in the UAE, where he used to score like over 20 goals every season he spent there, bar one. And so that's the story of Asamoah for you. Now, let me just read you um, some comments that are coming through um, from our viewers. Now, Nene Afedimano, our very, very loyal Nene Afedimano, you are seeing the game plan. Thank you very much for watching. Giles Kwesi and Martin Kingsley, you are saying keep the fire burning. Thank you very much, Giles, for your comment. Rawal Pijuma, you are saying old age. <laughs> I'm sure you are referring to Asamoah Jan. Um, he's over 30 now. So, you know, I mean, in football terms, you might say he's old, but he's, he's, he says he's going strong. I mean, he's caught for Ghana, though. So, um, let's just look forward to what he has in store for us. Harrison Osejebi, you are saying good work. Keep it up. Thank you very much, Harrison. Nabila Alasa, you are saying Asamoah Jan. It's really making money. Well, in his world, I mean, it's a pay cut. But in any of us, you know, I mean, in our lives, if we were to earn 30,000 euros a week, if you, um, Nabila Alassan, were to earn 30,000 euros a week, you can imagine what you would do in your life. So, yeah, we are, we are, we are quite happy for our captain. Now, to Phillips, you are saying, that's my man, Bros Fifi Anaman. <laughs> Good work, Dan. I salute you. Watching live from Italy in Bologna. Thank you very much. You're a very loyal viewer of the game plan, and I appreciate you very, very much. Now, Isaac, you're saying they should, they should send him mobile money. Isaac, who are you talking about? Are you talking about Asamoah <laughs> So Isaac, um, there, um, he is also saying, this means Asamoah is now a fake captain. Oh, Isaac. <laughs> Asamoah is a fake captain, according to Isaac Ose Otubua, who is currently... Within my eye shop. But I'll, I'm, I'm, I'll not talk about that issue right now. Now, Nabila Alasa, you are saying, Fifi, you are doing a great job. Keep it up. Thank you very much, Nabila. Derek Ni Otu Boche, you are saying, thanks for keeping us updated. Um, thanks for also watching the game plan show as well. Now, Chris Hammond, you are saying, nice haircut. <laughs> hey, today, I'm getting a lot of plaudits for this haircut. Um, all thanks to who jobless inside Medina, Libya, Cortez. I'm giving you a shout out. This is the first time I'm ever doing this. I've been going to him for a haircut for as long as I can remember. And he's always doing a good job. You know. So you guys who are around Medina, just visit Libya Cortez um, and ask for who jobless. And he he'll give you a similar thing uh, to what I am wearing today. <laughs> so that's it for my haircut. Wiz Wiz Awin, you are saying, I'm very much enjoying this show. I'm currently in Spain. So we have Italy and Spain today. Last time we had Dubai and Belgium and stuff. Charlie, you guys are international. Thank you very much for joining our show. Charles and Kroma, you're saying time to hang up your boots, Mr. Asamoajan. Don't say this around the likes of Sami and Nimiabua <laughs> or Bafojan. I mean, they might slap you. <laughs> I mean, Asamoajan, though. I mean, you see, let, let me tell you the thing about Asamoajan. He's the kind of player who always has something in store. You know, I mean, against Ethiopia, most of us thought he was washed. Before the game, there were a lot of reports. And I was reliably informed, personally, that Kwesiapia had had a conversation with him, saying, you know, Asamoah you are not fit these days. You are not scoring a lot of goals. I want to be using you less in the Black Stars. And Asamoah apparently agreed to it. Only for him, he didn't even play against Asuka Deportivo. Do you remember that friendly? We scored about seven goals. He didn't play in that friendly. He was not expected to start. And then, you know, he, he's given a start. He customizes his armband, takes to the field, and scores his 50th goal. That's the kind of player he is. I mean, he might not give you 90 minutes these days, but he might give you 50 and score a goal. So, you know, I mean, he's committed to the national team as well. So that's it. 
um, for Asamoja. Let's just move on quickly to our next topic. I'll be telling you about what happened at the Bukum Boxing Arena on Friday. Oh, Charlie, Obu Daisai, who is like the middleweight king in Ghana, right? He's a boxer. He's 30 years old. He's, you know, you know a titan in terms of our middleweight. Uh, he was supposed to fight Walter Kotondokwa, who is from Namibia. He's the champion in Namibia in terms of middleweight. So he, he flew into Ghana for that bout. Very, very big bout. It had a lot of dignitaries attending. Uh, the likes of Azuma Nelson was there. Aikote was there. Former sports minister Neil Ante Van der Poel was there as well. But you know what happened? Let me tell you what happened. In the fifth round, referee Rojabano had to stop the, the fight because Walter Kotondokwa had knocked out um, our own Obodai side. Very, very sad turn of events because at the pre pre bout presser, Obodai side was all boisterous energy. You know, he's going to beat up this guy. You know, we're all vimmed up for this fight, only for us to go and see him knocked to the canvas in the fifth round. So that's what happened. I'm sure you are seeing the visuals on your screen at this point. Obodai side, of course, this was his third loss. Um, 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 this, this is third loss, yes, overall in his career. His last loss came in about 2014, I believe, yes. 2014 in Pennsylvania, he lost that bout against Derek Webster. Um, and before then, he had lost in 2011 in London against a Brit fight. I'll find his name for you in a bit. So, Abu is suffering his third loss all by knockout. So, you, 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 you can understand the kind of uh, record he has. Of course, Walter Kotondokwa um, came into the fight having never been defeated in his career. He's now on 15 0 and 14 KOs. That's the fight. He came on 14 0 and he left on 15 0. So, very, very sad for Obodai Sai getting knocked down. Now, this was a WBO World Title Eliminator, which is which basically means for those of you who don't understand that the winner of this bout um, gets a chance. Um, or a shot at a world title, or he gets closer to a shot at the world title. Now, in, in the middleweight category in the world, of course, the, the, the big boss is GGG, Triple G, Gennady Golovkin. Yes, he is the, he is the champion of middleweight in the world. And so, the winner of this bout, who is now Walter Kotondoka, gets, you know, I mean, he doesn't get a direct shot, obviously, but then he's now in the running um, to fight the likes of, um, Gennady Golovkin. So that's 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 uh, the, the 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 enormity of the opportunity that has been missed by our own Obodai side. The miracle, as they call him, he's 30 years old, and you know he suffered a third loss. Very very sad for Ghanaian boxing as well. Of course, the current um, WBO uh, middleweight champion is um, um, Brit um, Saunders. Yes, his name is Joe Saunders. He's the current WBO middleweight. Champion um, and the rest, the WBA, WBC. In fact, it's a unified thing. It all belongs to Triple G, <laughs> the God of Four, as he's known. 37-0, 37, 37 bars, and not a single loss. He's he's an absolute beast in the ring, and so this is the kind of person that um, Obodai Sai would have had the opportunity of facing um, in the future if he had won this fight. So unfortunate for our boxing and for Obodai Sai that he had to lose, but he will, he will bounce back. I mean, the miracle is always known to bounce back. Now he's on 32 bouts and three, lo um, three losses um, and 24 knockouts. This was his second knockout um, as well. So his last defeat in November 2014, like I mentioned, and before then in September 2011. The miracle of Bodai Sai. Very, very sad for him. Now let me just go on Facebook again and see who is watching and see if there have been new comments um, to read for you now, Rawal P. Juma, you are saying that you are watching from Frankfurt. <laughs> so yes, we have a, um, a viewer from Germany as well. Chris Hammond, you are saying is that guy? Uh, is that the guy Asamajan is promoting? No, Asamajan is actually promoting Emmanuel Game Boy Tego. So that's the guy <laughs> Asamajan is promoting. Although that side is not um, on Asamajan's team, although he's associated with the whole Baby Jet Promotions brand. Um, in fact, Asamajan was there at, 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 at the fight as well. But he's not the main guy that he's, he's promoting. That's Emmanuel Game Boy Tego. So that's for you, Chris Hammond. Isaac Zoe, you are saying you are watching live from Kingston College in London. Good job, um, Blood. <laughs> Thanks, Blood, <laughs> for watching the game plan show. Now, let me just take you to our next topic we'll be discussing today, which is the MT. 
NFA Cup. We had a round of 16 over the weekend. Let me just take you through some of the results as they happen. Of course, Kotoko and Haas won, which is, of course, the, the headline um, for you. Uh, most of you, I believe, are either Kotoko or Haas fans, although some of you may profess to be Wafa fans. Wafa lost, by the way. Wafa is a club that I, I greatly admire. They lost uh, um, on that count. Let me, let me just take you through the results. Um, Accra Young Wise lost by go to nil to Accra House of Folk. That game um, happened on Sunday. Asante Kotoko also won by a goal to zero against Wasaman. That's in the MTN FA Cup. Now, Asante Kotoko, I, I heard a lot of complaints from your fans on Facebook. They were saying, oh, this was a very uninspiring performance. Kotoko were absolutely atrocious in the game. But you, know, you won. I mean, that's the most important thing. Now, you are now in the quarterfinal. Now, you can sort out, you know, whatever inadequacies you have in your team later. But, you know, Asante Kotoko are pushing forward. That's the most important thing, I guess, for the fans. So, you know, even though you didn't play well, you scored. Um, I believe that was a penalty scored by Omos Frempon. Now, Amidal's professionals beat Wafa. That was a surprise result, though, wasn't it? Wafa are currently leaders. They are the best club in Ghana, but none. I mean, they are the best. If you ask anybody in Ghana, they tell you Wafa is not the best club in Ghana right now. They are lying. They lost to Amidal's professionals, who are not even in the top division. So, Obia, Nyobia, MTNFA Cup. Always delivering very good results there. Um, Salamina, WM Salamina, they beat Steadfast by two goals to zero. FC Samal Techs lost by a goal to two to Wa All Stars, former Ghana Premier League champions. Mediama SC in an all Premier League clash with Parkwesi Indoms Elmina Sharks, they won by a goal to zero. That game was played in Takwa. Now, Brekum Chelsea were in absolutely stunning form. They thrashed Bechem United in a BA derby by four goals to zero. <laughs> Brooklyn Chelsea, oh my word, pal. Downbot FC, um, it was a 1-1 draw between them and Liberty Professionals. Liberty Professionals, of course, is a club of Godfred Akotubafu. I hope you are watching Godfred. <laughs> now, they uh, eliminated Liberty Professionals uh, by nine goals to eight on penalty. So, Liberty Professionals... Hard luck, hard luck, girlfriend. We are very, very sorry <laughs> on this. I mean, I'm personally not sorry, though. We've had a lot of debates on Liberty Professionals and how I feel about the club. So, uh, Liberty Professionals having it hard against Dambot FC. So, that's it for the MTN FA Cup as it happened over the weekend. Of course, the big story is that Kotoko and Haas are both into the semifinals. We'll be so following the stories as, as usual and be bringing you updates in subsequent editions of the game plan show. My name is Fifi Anaman. Once again, we are streaming live on Facebook, Paul's Ghana Sports. Please join us and you know send in your comments. I'll read them as the show progresses. In fact, let me just check Facebook once again and see who is currently commenting um, on the show. We see Kwame Usua Pinton joining. Thank you very much, Kwame, for joining the show. It's the game plan show on Facebook. Um, let me see, let me see. Isaac Zou, okay, you were saying you're watching from Kingston College. Yes, I've already read your comment. Um, Ewuku Prince, you are saying you are watching live from China. Paul's Ghana Sports is my source of info when it comes to sports. I just shared the news about Samajan on some WeChat platform called Sports Highlight here in China. Wow, thank you very much um, for helping push our brand, um, Ewuku Prince, in China. China is actually the favorite, um, well, it's the country, adoptive country, of my boss, girlfriend, Akotoba, who was there for many years. So he's a Chinese Ghanaian, mm. <laughs> if you can call him that. So I'm sure he'll be very happy to hear this. Now, Eba Mpintwa Kwesi. Hey, what do you need there? <laughs> you're saying, cool job, bro. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we, are, we are very glad that you are enjoying the show. Prince of Four, you're saying you're watching live from Rome. Wow, from Italy. Thank you very much for joining in the show. James, jo James, James, you're saying... I love the show. I am James James, watching from South Korea. <laughs> James James, thank you for joining us from South Korea. We have a lot of international audience today. Kwabna, you are saying great show, guys. I am FD, you are saying you are watching from Germany, Dortmund. Great show. Nana Abuaji Da Costa, I really love your show. We really love you, our audience, as well. Thank you very much for joining us. Now, let's move on to our next topic, which is the Black Stars. Let me tell you about the Black Stars. They've gathered in Accra once again. That was yesterday, in fact, um, to train ahead of two friendlies. The first game is happening on June the 28th, 
Um, but because of time differences, and this is very important for those of you who are here in Ghana with me, if you're not in Dortmund or Frankfurt or Rome, if you're here in Accra, please take note of this. On June the 28th, we'll be playing Mexico. But because of time differences, the game will actually happen on June the 29th in Ghana. It will be at 12.30 a.m. for those of you who want to follow the game. I'm here to get TV details. We'll be bringing you in subsequent um, editions of the game plan. But that's what will be happening. June 28th in the U.S., but June 20, 29th in Ghana. 12.30 a.m., Ghana, Mexico. Please look forward to that as well. And then on July 1st, we are playing the Americans, the U.S. of A. We've met them so many times in the last few years. Um, 2014 World Cup, we met them. 2010 World Cup, we met them as well. So that's what the Blasters are training for. So they gathered in Accra, and you know, not a lot of the players showed up, and I'll be um, giving you the details of how many of them showed up. 21 players showed up for training in Accra yesterday. The players who trained are um, Felix Annan, um, Ado, Richard Ofori, Safo, Lumo, Dakwa, John Boy, um, Opoku, Sumaila, Akame Nkun, Amate, Isaac Saki, Ebenezer Ofori, um, Thomas in Japan, Thomas Pate, Winfo, Kobuna of House of Folk, Asamwajan, Ab Abdul Majid Waris, Yao Yeboa, a champion, Frank a champion, that, uh, that is, and Rafael Dramina. And so 21 players showed up. And the you brothers, let me tell you about the you brothers. Um, they won't be playing against the Mexicans and the Americans because apparently, there are clubs, Andrea you plays for West Ham and Jordan you plays for Swansea, all in the Premier League. Their clubs are saying that because it's not, the matches are not going to take place in a window that is FIFA sanctioned. Remember, um, FIFA, on FIFA's calendar, we are not supposed to be playing friendlies now. On FIFA's calendar, the Confederations Cup is supposed to be taking place during this window. And so Ghana is just taking advantage of, you know, the off-season to take, undertake these friendlies. And so the clubs have every right to call their players back. And Andrea you and Swansea... Um, sorry, Andrea, you and West Ham, and Jordan, you and Swansea are all saying, you know, they need each other at this point, and so they will not be playing. As well as Daniel Mate, who plays at Leicester. Leicester are saying that they need their player back. So that's what is happening in that, um, in that camp of the Black Stars. So we will be missing the IU brothers, as well as Daniel Amate. As well. Every year, Aqua has also been confirmed to be injured. In fact, we have a, a voice, um, a video, sorry, from the GFA communications chief, Ibrahim Sanidar explaining why some players will be absent from the squads to play Mexico and USM. Take a look at this video. The free aqua is going to be here, so we could not turn up for training. And as we well know, Andrea, you and Jordan are here. We've received the request from the clubs, from their clubs including Daniel Abate, to exclude them from the team. The reason why we have not seen Andrea, you and Jordan, uh, uh, we are still engaging with the clubs. Oh, it's better. The clear case is that these friendly matches are not within the FIFA dates for the So the clubs have the ultimate say for whether they are players in play or not. But we are counting on the good relationship we have with these clubs. Of course, Ibrahim Sanidara at Accra Sports Stadium um, yesterday um, speaking to the press about the Black Stars and issues arising um, ahead of their friendlies against Mexico, El Tri, <laughs> um, um, on the June the 28th, I should say, and the U.S. on July the 1st. So that's it um, for the Black Stars. Let me just wrap up with what is happening in the camp of Baba Rahman, our left back. He was ably replaced by um, Lumo Abonyenu. For those of you who wrote the game against Ethiopia, Lumo was absolutely stunning on the day. And people have already said, hey, my brother, man, you are in trouble. Though. But I mean, come on. Healthy competition is good in any, in any society or in any system. And so, yes, um, I, I, I am very, very happy at the prospects going forward. We have Lumo and Barbara Man. Barbara Man has returned from injury. He got um, injured in Gabon at the AFCON. Yes, he got injured there. He's been out for about close to uh, five to six months. Um, on Friday, um, he, he showed the first signs of training at Schalke. You, I'm sure you're seeing the video currently on your screens right now, Barbara Man training. And so, yeah, he's back. And he made, what, 21 appearances for Schalke 
before he went on his injury. He played very well in the Europa League, even scored a goal at a point. So 21 appearances and a goal, about 13 appearances in the Bundesliga. And Schalke, you know, credit to Schalke. Come on, let's give credit to this amazing club, um, the Royal Blues. They, they stuck, you know, with, with Barbara Man. Many clubs would have ditched him at a certain point. But they even um, started talks to extend his contract. Can you imagine when he was out injured? But they were saying, you know, Barbara Man, we know your, your knee is botched and all that, but we still need you in, at this club. How many players have, have that kind of luxury for a club to say, you know what, you are injured, but we still need you. So that's the kind of player Barbara Man is. Fantastic player. Fantastic individual as well. He's a very, very humble chap, very hardworking. And so we are very happy to see you back, Barbara Man. And hopefully see you in the Black Star soon. And uh, yes, that's it for Barbara Man. Let me just quickly check out what is happening on Facebook before I wrap up finally on the Game Plan Show. Who is commenting? Nana Baji, I've already um, read your comment. Nana Baji da Costa. Nene Afedi Mano is back <laughs> commenting. Thank you very much, Nene for that as well. So this has been a game plan show with me, Fifi Anaman. Thank you very much for those of you who join us from Germany, from the US, you know, from, from wherever, from London as well. And, and for you in China who is sharing our show, you know, spreading the good news um, in Asia. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much for all that you are doing for our show. I'll come your way again tomorrow, hopefully if God gives us life and health, I'll be here to give you the rundown of everything that's happening in the world of Ghanaian sport. But before I bounce out, let me just read you the last few comments before I, I, I leave the studio. I won't be forgiven if I don't read these comments. Emmanuel Beckham, you are saying you are watching live from the UK. Thank you very much, Emmanuel. Derek, Neo Tubocho, you are saying you are watching from my phone. Thank you, thank you very much. Muntari Young, <laughs> I am always behind the screens without commenting. I love the show, keep it up. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much for, for your comments. Gordon Quist. Very, very regular view are Gordon Quist. You are saying, I hope the Black Stars will be the USA again. I also hope so. Sana Mengal, Sana Mengal. You are saying, great show. Um, I am in Pakistan. <laughs> wow. Um, Bright Amuz, you are saying, which state in the US is the Black Stars playing? We'd love to watch. And we are first playing, um, I believe, in Houston, Texas, and then in East Hartford, um, Connecticut. So for, for you in the US. Chris Hammond, you are saying, Sunny Muntari's best friend. <laughs> Emily Amos, you are saying we are praying they win against the U.S. And now, Baji Dacosta, you are saying it's Muntari back. No, he's not back. Patrick Pepper, you are saying we are watching from the USA Great Show. Thank you very much. I'm wrapping up. Fifi Anaman, back tomorrow. Stay tuned.